Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Really Show. I'm your host, Aaron Ross. Today's show, a great general, a great leader. Hey, if you like this show, bring the love, subscribe. <laughs> bring the love, baby. As far as great American World War II generals go, you're probably familiar with names such as George Patton, Douglas MacArthur, and Dwight Eisenhower. But there was another great World War II general that you're probably not as familiar with. Not because he didn't measure up to the previous three, quite the contrary. Some historians would say that he's a greater military man than all three. George C. Marshall, his military career and stature is often seen in the same light as that of George Washington's. His brilliance, integrity, and unpretentiousness was very unusual for someone of his rank and position. He is the only person ever to have served as the Army Chief of Staff, Secretary of State, and Secretary of Defense. Okay, uh, yes. The son of a successful businessman, George's parents had expectations of good grades, which his older brother and sister had excelled at, but George did not. And this was the source of some shame. Although his success was limited in most subjects, he did quite well in history. At 16, George entered the Virginia Military Institute. He decided to focus on excelling as a military cadet at VMI rather than concentrating on his academics. This determination paid off and by the end of his first year he was the top military student in his class. And by his final year he had risen to the rank of first captain, highest rank at VMI. After graduating, Marshall knew that his greatest strengths were aligned with the military. Although his parents did object to the idea of him pursuing a military career, he joined anyways. Yeah! He enlisted and after passing the officer's examination, he received the rank of second lieutenant in the U.S. Army Infantry. Shortly thereafter, in 1902, he married Lily Coles. And soon after that, he was commissioned to the Philippines. And it was there that he learned a great deal more about military leadership. In 1906, Marshall was looking for a way to further his military career. He did so by enrolling at the officer's training school at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. This was a highly competitive school and only the top half of the class was asked back for the second year of studies. George had some challenges as he was one of the lowest ranking officers in his class and at the age of 25, one of its youngest. Tougher yet, he knew he had to find a way to excel at academics if he wanted to be a part of that second year. Determined to succeed, he worked so hard that he not only excelled, he finished as the top student in the class. Mm. And when he graduated the following year, he was hired as an instructor. Then came World War I, and Marshall served in the 1st Division as head of operations in France. He was instrumental in the planning and coordination of the Misargon Offensive, which helped in the defeat of the German army on the Western Front in 1918. At the end of the Great War, World War I, Marshall had befriended and was mentored by General John Joseph Black Jack Pershing. General Pershing had led the American Expeditionary Forces to victory over Germany in World War I. Colonel Marshall, now only in his late 30s, accompanied Pershing on a victory tour of Europe, where George made the acquaintance of royalty and world leaders, thus improving his prospects as a future leader himself. Marshall was then assigned to China, where he oversaw U.S. troops protecting American businessmen and their families. Fortunately, by this time, his wife Lily's health had improved and she was able to accompany him. George even learned to speak Chinese while there. In 1927, Marshall was stationed in Washington, D.C. as an instructor in the Army War College. Sadly, it was around this time that his wife had surgery and unexpectedly died from complications while recovering. Grief-stricken from his wife's death, George's military friends knew that a change of location would be good for him. They made arrangements for him to be assigned to Fort Benning, Georgia, where he became head instructor. Around this time, he met Catherine Brown, a one-time film actress, and they married in 1930. Then in 1939, one of Marshall's lifelong ambitions came to pass, and he was sworn in as Army Chief of Staff. Wow, oh, yes. This coincided with the Nazi invasion of Poland and the beginning of World War II. A couple of years later, the United States entered World War II. And by 1943, the tide was beginning to turn for America and its allies. General Marshall then came up with a plan to defeat the Nazis once and for all. The Allied Invasion of Northwestern Europe, codenamed Operation Overlord. Operation Overlord! 
As Army Chief of Staff, Marshall appointed General Eisenhower as Supreme Commander of Operation Overlord. With President Roosevelt's support, they planned an invasion of France. The D-Day invasion of June 6, 1944 was a turning point of the war. Mm. On November 18th of 1945, General George Marshall retired from military duty. But that retirement was short-lived. President Truman appointed Marshall ambassador and head of the U.S. mission to China. In 1947, George Marshall was appointed Secretary of State. At this time, Europe had still not recovered from World War II. Secretary of State Marshall knew that it was in the United States' best interest to help Europe achieve stability. Marshall was even trying to convince Joseph Stalin to support this effort, but Stalin had no interest. Marshall delivered his famous European Recovery Act address at Harvard University's commencement on June 5, 1947. The European Recovery Act, which became famously known as the Marshall Plan, was successfully implemented due to his tireless support. George Marshall was then appointed Secretary of Defense in 1950 and 51, and this was his last official position. After Marshall had retired from all official positions, he remained on the active duty list as the highest ranking general of the army, available for consultation by the government. Bing. Because of his work on the Marshall Plan, he received the Nobel Peace Prize in 1953. His plan helped bring recovery to Europe from the devastation of World War II. He is the only soldier ever to receive the Nobel Peace Prize. Because that's sort of like an oxymoron, right? Not gonna soldier me the... Well, that's our show for today. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments area. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time. That's a big boom. You gotta drop it. You gotta boom, drop the mic, but people go, no, wait, come back, and then you pick the mic back up. Okay.